Hey guys, welcome to this video here where I want to talk to you about how to memorize the notes on the entire fretboard of the guitar. Uh, so if you're an advancing guitar player, you get to that point where it's like you really want to up your level in your game, you want to learn the notes on the fretboard so either you can learn songs faster, uh, you can communicate to other musicians if you're in a band or trying to get into a band, you can understand what you're doing more, be in more command of your playing, maybe you want to compose your own music or other things like that. These are all reasons why we learn the notes on the fretboard and uh, it helps in all those areas. So in this video I'm going to share with you uh, five ways that you can master the notes on the fretboard or if you're a guitar teacher that's trying to help your students learn how to master or memorize the notes on the fretboard this can be helpful to you as well Uh, so my name is Matt Friedland. I am the founder of the 360 Music System. I'm a professional guitarist and music instructor. I have a, a music studio in Tempe, Arizona. So um, if you get value from this video, uh, if you enjoy this video, if this is very helpful to you, uh, please subscribe to the channel, uh, follow this page, uh, like, leave comments to see what you think about it. If you have suggestions, if it's helpful to you, uh, all the feedback is very appreciated and I appreciate all the support. Now be sure to stick around to the end because I'm going to share with you a bonus tip, a sixth tip that is a really uh, remarkable way to learn the notes on the fretboard. It's transformative that most guitar players actually don't uh, implement or take advantage of, but what I find is the pros uh, know and use this skill and this is what helps them uh, learn the notes or memorize the notes on the instrument uh, better than uh, most people at a top-notch level. So stick around to the end for that bonus tip. So the first thing I want to start with is uh, how to learn the notes on the fretboard. There are some things that you can do that you don't even need your guitar uh, to do them, which is great because uh, we don't always have access to our guitar. So the first thing I want to start with is a, a website, a free website uh, called musictheory.net that has some great exercises on identifying notes on the fretboard and you can do this from your phone or your computer if you're at work or something like that you know if you just don't have access to your guitar and I've used this site a lot musictheory.net is totally free I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that but it's something that I've used a lot in my studies to understand where the notes are on the fretboard so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you uh, in the next clip here how to access musictheory.net and how to learn the notes on the fretboard using one of their exercises all right, guys, so here we are over at musictheory.net. This is a totally free website, a great website for learning things about music theory, and they have some great exercises that can really help you learn the notes on the fretboard. So I'm just going to click on the exercises here, and you'll see a ton of great ones here for a variety of different things. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to fretboard note identification. And so here we have a grid of the uh, fretboard here, so it's pretty straightforward. So let me kind of show you a few things first. Uh, basically, they're just giving you a red dot to basically identify the note on that particular uh, string here. The frets are numbered as they go across. Um, all right, so what we can do here is we can actually customize this a little bit and going into the settings. Now it's default set to guitar. And um, what we can do is we can look at the fret positions and I have it set for just within the first five frets, which I recommend kind of zeroing in on a particular area versus trying to take on the entire fretboard. So this is nice that you can customize that. So this is just set within the first five frets and you can work on different zones there. And depending on what your familiarity is with the fretboard, I mean, if you're kind of new to this, you may want to just start on one string, for example, just the sixth string. So uh, you can just check that off. Now, if you're more experienced, you might want to add maybe a couple strings, but I generally recommend not doing the entire fretboard right away uh, so that you can kind of narrow in or zero in on an area and really um, master that particular area of the fretboard and memorize those notes and then kind of build out areas as you expand out and get more familiar. So this is great that musictheory.net has this uh, trainer here that can help with that. Um, so basically, it's pretty simple. All, all they're doing is giving you a red dot here on the particular uh, string. So we have fret 5 of string 6, and that would be our A. So we'd select that. And just going through there, those, we have the second fret. So this would be obviously F sharp or G flat. So um, by the way, I'm assuming that if you're trying to learn the notes on the fretboard, you already know where your whole steps and half steps are and your sharps and flats, or you understand that concept. If you don't, that's probably what you want to learn first. So assuming that you already know that, uh, then you can move into this. So we got the fourth fret. 
here we have a G sharp or A flat. Both are correct. And so you want to know both, doesn't matter which one you select. I'm going to go with A flat though. Now the idea is we got an open E here. We're going to start to see repeats of the same note. So here's the A again on the fifth fret. Okay, here's the first fret F. Here's that fifth fret again. So this is what's good about this because you're going to be working in that range and seeing the same notes over and over again. And here, here's that A again. So this is what really helps you memorize and ingrain the note. There's that F sharp again. This is what we want. We don't want to spread out. There's that A again. So the idea is the more that you do that, there it is again, F sharp again. That's not a bad thing. Actually, that's a really good thing is that they're giving you the same notes over and over again. And that's the key to this is the repetition is what builds it into your memory. Anything that you have memorized, it's because you've repeated it several times, multiple times, and it just becomes ingrained. So uh, that's how we want to structure this here. So then you can move into different strings if you want. There's that fifth fret again, right? So that's the cool thing about the, uh, the exercise trainer. Let's say you want to move into the fifth string. We'll just select the fifth string, and then you can work within that range there. So now everything's on string five. So we've got the A here, and we've got A sharp or B flat. Typically, we'll call it B flat. Back to the A, and then we've got over to the C. Okay, so like you could do this on your phone. This only takes like a minute or two uh, a day. They've actually got some great stuff up in the top to track your score. I've got 18 out of 18 here. Um, it's good to um, uh, you know have some some ways to track your information. You know how many the way I look at this is like how many are you getting right? Let's say in maybe you know two or three minutes. You don't need to do this for like 15, 20, 30 minutes. It's not how long you do it. It's how many you can get right in the shortest amount of time because you need to be able to think of these things or know these notes, you know, very quickly. Um, so you could do it like say, okay, well, I'm going to do a minute of this exercise and how many can I get right in one minute? And, uh, you know, by being consistent, the next time you do it, um, you should be improving your score. So the point is that you have some ways to kind of track your stats here and tracking yourself is a great way to improve in any area, uh, but particularly in this one for um, just understanding or memorizing where the notes are on the fretboard. So musictheory.net, great uh, resource, great exercise trainer, just simple stuff. Um, customize it to how it suits your needs and I guarantee it'll definitely help you memorize the notes on the fretboard. So let's check out the next method here. It's a little bit old school, but I'll show you the next great way that you can learn the notes on your fretboard in the next segment here. All right, guys, so the second way to master the notes on the fretboard is to go old school pen and paper, writing things out. Literally writing the notes on a diagram or writing things in different ways musically is extremely useful and helpful into mastering the notes on the fretboard, understanding how things work on your fretboard, something I've done a ton. As a teacher, teaching this and writing things out has helped a lot. So in the next clip, I'm going to show you how you can structure some writing exercises so that you can master the notes on the fretboard. All right, guys, so uh, here's some examples of simply just writing out uh, various things on the fretboard using, this is just a table diagram I made with Microsoft Word, or you can just write it out yourself of just a grid of the fretboard. You might wanna start by just writing the fret numbers. So this would be three and five, seven, nine, and we've got 12 here. Just within the first 12 frets is generally fine. I'm using pen here just so it shows up a little bit more on the camera, but I recommend using pencil in case you have to erase and start over. So uh, one of the first things you can do to learn the notes on the fretboard is simply just writing out uh, major scales across one string. So I'm gonna say like if this is our first string here, let's say if I write out an F major scale on just the first string. So that would mean that the F is here Okay, so I go, okay, well, what's the next note after F? Well, that's G, so I write that there. And then we'd have A here, and then we need a B flat here. We've got a C, D, and then we've got an E, and then we'd be back to F on the, um, on the 13th fret there. So uh, just writing out major scales. Let's do another one. Let's say if we were to write out an A major scale, well, if I'm gonna write an A here on string three, so I've got A, B, I'd have a C sharp, and then have a D, I'd have an E, got an F sharp, got a G sharp, and then we've got our A here. So there we are writing it across the um, fretboard um, in, in the, uh, for the A major scale. 
Now, if you're not totally sure what your scales are yet, you might want to try something different. Maybe you're just trying to, to label all the notes on the first string, um, you know, without any sharps or flats. So you'd have, you know, your E is here. So we'd have e, um, F would be here. Then we've got G on the third fret, A. We've got B, C is on the eighth fret. Then we've got D, then we've got E on the twelfth is fine. So basically just writing something out across one string, and, and believe me, writing really does help, and you can do like, you know, major scales, you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. You're kind of learning the notes on your fretboard, but you're also kind of ingraining, let's say, a major scale, which is really important, you know, musically. Another thing you can do is, uh, let's say you're writing a scale form. So let's say um, we're writing a major scale, and this is fret three here, and uh, we're doing a G major scale. You can write out scale diagrams, this way too. Those are great ways to embed it into your um, visualization and understanding of the fretboard. So like here is basically our major scale uh, diagram here. Now um, it's good to write those out and let's say I'm going to convert that into um, you know the notes over here. So this is going to be fret three here. So what I'd get was I'd get G, A, we'd have B, C, D, E, F sharp, and back to G, and so on. Here's A, we've got B, we've got C, and then we've got D, E, and we've got our F sharp, we've got our G here, and then we've got our A here. And what you could also do is uh, you could then maybe write the intervals if you wanted to do that. It's another great way to learn notes and things on your fretboard. So again, here is fret three and fret five. So G and A, that's your root, this is your major second, then you've got your major third, your B is your major third, you got your perfect fourth, perfect fifth, you got our major sixth, major seventh, and then we got our octave, and then we basically do this again, major second, we got our major third, perfect fourth, you got our perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and we got our root, and then here's our major second again. So as you can see here, there's various ways that you could do this. You could do this with a scale across one string. You could do it with just naming the notes if you're not familiar with all your scales yet. You could do it with a diagram and convert it into uh, notes. Then you can even write the intervals or convert that out. Um, one last thing you could even do is, is essentially chords. So um, if you know some chord forms or, or a lot of chord forms, then this is another great way to uh, you know, learn the notes of the uh, of of within those chords and on your fretboard. So let's say you're taking, um, if we've got, you know, let's say this is uh, fret three, five. Let's say this is seven. So let's say uh, this is an, an E chord here, right? So we're doing this thing as like an E bar chord. Let's say, okay. So then down here, let's say if I just write this, this will be fret seven and nine here. So if I write the notes in here. This, this note will also be here. So what I'll get is I'll have E, this will be B, we have, we have E, G sharp, and then we've got B here, and this will also be B here. So that's what this chord translates into uh, in terms of the notes. And then I could also take it another step further and I could say, all right, well, what are these intervals? So we've got root, we've got perfect fifth, we've got the root, we've got the major third, and then we've got the perfect fifth, and we even have the perfect fifth over here. So you could do this with a variety of different chords and things like that, but basically the idea is writing them out like this I think really helps. It was something that was a main part of my studies. I've taken uh, many courses, many classes at the university level and understanding the fretboard, and a lot of learning this stuff does deal with the writing, and you don't need your guitar to do it, which is actually pretty convenient. Um, if you don't have your guitar, you can still benefit by doing these kind of exercises, and I can say, you know, as a teacher over the years of having to write these things out over and over again, um, that that really helped me as well. Like I, it really ingrained it for me as well. So whether you're trying to learn uh, the notes on the fretboard uh, yourself, this is a great exercise, or if you're a teacher and you're trying to help your students learn the notes on the fretboard, um, writing exercises are really great ways that they can, um, you know, uh, learn the notes on the fretboard. And this is a great way that you can do that.
All right, guys, so if you worked with musictheory.net, if you're writing some of the exercises out and you're starting to get really familiar with, with where the notes are, then you're ready for the third step, the next step of let's play this on the guitar now to really fully ingrain the notes on the fretboard or fully memorize the notes on the fretboard. Now, before we get into that, I'm gonna show you the next steps, the next few things that you can do here. Here's what you need to understand. Uh, about understanding or, or getting to the point where you have the notes memorized on the fretboard. Music is in time. It has a groove, it has a beat, it has a pulse, it's always moving, particularly, you know, guitar music, pop, rock, jazz, funk, blues, any of that kind of stuff. So doing the previous exercises are good, but the one thing about those exercises is they don't have any time factor necessarily. Maybe musictheory.net does if you're kind of timing yourself within a minute how many you can get right, which is good. But in music, it's moving. So if it takes you like 10 seconds to think of the note, it's too late, it's over. So the best way to train yourself to know the notes like in time is to play them in time. Okay, so we're gonna do that either with a drum track or a metronome. You have to be able to train yourself to think in time, to know the notes instantaneously. That's how the pros get to that point where they just know all the notes up and down the fretboard is because they're doing it in time and that's what's gonna allow you to translate it to actual music so you can apply it, okay? So, based off of the writing exercises, one method we can do is we can do scales across one string. So this is tip number three, okay? Playing the scales across one string, but now doing it in time and naming the notes as we play them, okay? Now, why scales? Well, because scales make up the majority of what we play in music. They're the basis of melodies and, you know, improvisation and, and countless things. So you might as well kill two birds with one stone. Just naming the notes on each fret, you know, in a row, that's okay, but you're not gonna play that. What you're gonna play generally are gonna be scales and things and melodies and chords. So you might as well implement that into this kind of exercise. So we need a time factor. I'm gonna use a drum beat. Got one on the app here. You can use a metronome, whatever you need to keep a time thing going. And we're saying, okay, well, in our writing exercise, we did F major, okay? So we know F major on that string now. That's where the notes are, okay? Now, I gotta do this in time and name the notes. Not how fast you do it, though. So I wanna give myself time to think and I can always build on it from there. So simply, I'm gonna name the notes as I play them. I'm gonna just play whole notes. Maybe go a couple times up and down, but I recommend doing about four times minimum to fully ingrain. So that would look like this. We start on the F, so we get F, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, B flat, C, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, E, two, three, four, F. Going backwards, E, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, B flat, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, F, two, three, four. Okay, so that's to me one repetition. It's not enough necessarily just to do one. I know that I have to do probably about four of them, a minimum, sometimes eight, for it to fully sink in with time, with a drum groove. That's really what's going to tie it all together. Now, if you can't get it successfully one time in a row, usually that means that it's, you're going too fast. You're not giving yourself enough time to think. So go slow, that's why I did it with just whole notes. And once you develop that skill, the ability to do that, then you can increase the speed uh, incrementally. But make sure you're maintaining a high level of success. So this is tip number three, scales across uh, one string. Now you can do this with any scale. It could be a pentatonic scale, it could be a minor scale, whatever. Um, naming the notes, doing that is great on any string. So that's tip number three, scales across the string. Now, let's take it kind of another step. Tip number four is gonna be scales up and down the strings because we play a lot in positions on the guitar. Now, this is harder because you have to know the notes on each string uh, to be able to do this. Um, it's easier to do it on one string first. That's why I recommend that. 
Now, if we go on um, uh, just up and down the strings, so the example I had in the, the writing exercise was the G major scale, which you guys should be familiar with that scale form, um, or any scale form really. Now, uh, instead of thinking, okay, you know, what note is on this string, this string, and that kind of stuff, if we know the notes in G major are just G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G, if we just know that, then we don't really have to think about these notes necessarily on each particular string. Um, we just kind of uh, apply the notes of the G major scale to the fingering. Instead of thinking like, okay, well, string five fret two is what, string five fret three is what, just naming the notes of the G major scale. So again, doing this in time. So here's my click. I'm going to do whole notes, whatever tempo works for you, whatever rhythm, but make sure you can get close to 100% accuracy. Looks like this. So we go G, 2, 3, 4, A, 2, 3, 4, B, 2, 3, 4, C, 2, 3, 4, D, 2, 3, 4, E, 2, 3, 4, F sharp, 2, 3, 4, G. Back to A, two, three, four, B, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, E, two, three, four, F sharp, two, three, four, G. And I go backwards, right? F sharp, E, you can sing the notes, D. And so on. Might as well sing them too at a certain point. Get your voice attached to your instrument is a great way to really connect the instrument so you become one with the instrument. So we're kind of doing a lot of things at one time here. Learning the notes, doing it in time, key, super important. When you practice in time, practicing with a drum track, it might seem kind of basic with whole notes and that kind of stuff, but you're working on your internal feel and your time simultaneously. And that's always a great skill to work on and improve. The better your time is, the better musician you're going to be, guaranteed. 100%. And might as well sing the notes while you're at it. Um, you know, kind of do three or four things simultaneously. Real easy stuff, but really helps a lot. Okay, so that's tip number four. Scales up and down. Any scale you want. This is a major scale. Could be a pentatonic scale. Could be a mode. It could be, you know, G Aeolian, G A B flat, C D E flat, F G, G harmonic minor, whatever you want to do. Scales up and down. Uh, um, the fretboard, great way to uh, learn the notes and name them out loud as you play them. Okay, now tip number five, taking one note and playing it on all six strings. Now it's a little trickier uh, because it's going to move you around on the fretboard a lot more. Let's stick with uh, G here. So the idea is I'm going to find the G on all the, all the strings. So here's my first G, top string on fret three. Next note, next G going to go to the A here, or excuse me, the, the G on the 10th fret. Next G is here on the 5th fret of the D string. Next G, 12th fret, we got G here. And then we've got G here on the 3rd fret. I'm going to go backwards. Okay, and again, it's got to be in time. If you don't do it in time, it's not going to sink in. So. Maybe same whole notes. Looks like this. We got G. Leave early to get the note, next note. The next G. Next G. Next G. Next G. And then going backwards. There's the next G. G again. And then here we go back to the first G. Okay, and uh, essentially you got to do that at least four times successfully. Um, that's the indicator or the marker for me, the measurement for me that I know now I really know it. Because uh, if you can't do it four times in a row, if you're struggling, it's not sinking in yet. Um, and uh, that's the goal, I think, to hit that so that it sinks in. So at a certain point, you're not going to need to practice this anymore, really. It's going to be ingrained. You're just going to know it. 
uh, like your last name, basically. And that's the goal. Okay, so that is, I think, tip number five here. Uh, the notes on each string, and then you want to move on to the next note. I usually would do this in increments of fourths, maybe in the circle of uh, fourths. So if I was on G, the next one, next key would be D. So maybe I find all the Ds, and then maybe go to, or excuse me, uh, C would be the next fourth. So going to the left on the circle. So all the Cs, then all the Fs, then all the B flats, and all the E flats, and all the A flats, and D flats, and so on, until so you get fully around the circle of fourths. So you're kind of using the circle of fourths as a tool uh, to navigate all the notes. Uh, and that's um, a common way that the circle of fourths or fifths is actually used, is to learn keys and things like that, by the way. Uh, you could go in fifths as well if you want to go the reverse direction, but uh, all the notes. You don't have to do them all in one day. Maybe you just do G, C, F, B flat. Maybe the next day you go uh, same notes, and then maybe the third day you go G, uh, D, A, E, or something like that. But uh, try and find some kind of level of consistency. So that was tip number five. So let me kind of go through here. We had first one, musictheory.net. Second one, old school writing it out. Third one, playing it scales across uh, one string. Then we had the fourth tip was uh, you, uh, playing the scales up and down vertically. Uh, then we had the fifth tip was each note on each string up and down. Now I said there was going to be a bonus tip, but actually I'm going to give you two bonuses. Okay, This is uh, number six or bonus number one here. Um, we want to know all these notes and apply them to music. So maybe think about using them in terms of the, a riff or something that you already know and just naming the notes of that particular riff, uh, for example, or an actual piece of music. So let's say it's a riff like, um, I don't know, like The Ocean by Led Zeppelin. Okay, so, so we got that riff there. So you say, okay, well, what am I playing? So let's name the notes. All right, well, I'm doing a hammer on in from the G into the A. G to A twice. Then coming down to the G, E, and C here. Okay, so, all right, got that. And then got D to E, G and D, E, A. C sharp to A, and then to D. So I'm naming the notes in this particular riff, and what that'll help us do is understand like what's happening with the riff, or wh why does this work, or what's the whole deal. Just got an A here. This is a C major triad. Then we got this D thing. There's a major third, C sharp to A. So it's kind of like this um, kind of bluesy kind of riff in a way. Uh, we got a triad, kind of pentatonic-y. But naming the notes within the riff kind of helps you make sense of it. Let's take another riff like uh, Sunshine of Your Love or something, like real simple single note. Okay, so like we got a D here. D, C. Next note, go to the A, A flat, G, D, F, and back to D. Just naming the notes within the riff. What is all this stuff? Well, it's really just a blues scale if you look at it. If you name the notes, it's a D minor blues scale just descending. So this is bonus tip number one or tip number six is some of the stuff that you already know, um, riffs or things like that, parts of songs, just start naming the notes of what you're playing and thinking about what you're actually doing. Try and relate it to real music. Okay, so that's tip number six, bonus tip number one. Now, the real bonus tip, uh, the one that I was saving for the very end, uh, the tip here, uh, or tip number seven, is uh, what the pros do and what transform my ability to really know the notes on the fretboard. One of the main key things is uh, actually reading standard music notation. And uh, as a guitar player, I've been playing for several years, uh, played in bands, um, jammed out with plenty of people, couldn't read any music really, um, tried, had some teachers that gave me some music, didn't know what I was doing, didn't get it, didn't see the importance of it uh, until later uh, when I had some kind of uh, realizations that, hey, like a lot of the good players are really awesome players that I was meeting or jamming with or, you know, encountering. Uh, could read music, and I was like, hmm, what's going on? I think they kind of know something that I don't know. Uh, so I decided to try and learn how to read music, and what I found, one of the, the, the um, awesome things that, what helps with learning how to read music 
uh, is, is it actually syncs up the visualization of the note on the music to your note on the fretboard. And so because a lot of guitar players can't read, generally they struggle with knowing the notes or a variety of other things. They just can't see the information versus somebody who can read can look at the information and understand musically better uh, because it's in front of them and they have a clear picture of that. So uh, there's some ways that you can get into reading. I'm going to show you in the next clip um, a great way to start. Just basic stuff with reading that can really help you map out the notes on the fretboard. And again, when you read music, one of the things that's important about this is that you read in time, basically. Because you have to play the notes, they happen in a series, and you have to do it in time. So by doing it in time, you're training yourself to think in time, and that's what really ingrains uh, the memorization of the fretboard. So in the, in the next clip here, I'm going to show you a little bit of how to read on the fretboard. Um, there's a variety of different books that you can use, but I'm going to show you uh, a great website uh, that helps with uh, reading and, and getting started with this. So I'll show you this in the next clip here. All right, guys, so in this video, I want to show you how reading can actually help you ingrain and learn the notes. Now, you can use a, any books that you want. I mean, there's tons of books that are great for reading. I can go down a whole list of things. And I actually leave in the comments if you want to hear a list of books that I, I recommend for reading in a variety of ways. I'll make a video if you're interested in that. Uh, but what I'm using right now is a website called sightreadingfactory.com. I'm not sponsored by them. I don't get any profits or anything like that from them if you sign up with them. But this is a great website because you can customize reading reading exercises to suit your needs. Now, if you're new to reading and things like that, um, I would start very simple. Uh, but it, as you'll see here, I just have, um, you know, basically just half notes. And this is really just going from uh, basically G, uh, the highest note we got is a D. You want your guitar here, and here's the idea. Um, you can play along with this. There's a little play um, uh, button right here. So, uh, the idea is doing this in time. So if we look at the notes, we've got a G to start, two G's, two A's, a B, and a C. So the idea is as you're playing these on the guitar, and you can play these in a variety of different places, you have to think in time in order to be able to read. So real simple, I'm going to uh, play along with this. You can hit play here, and there's a playback button, and you play with it. So we get G, G. Just as simple as that, you know. So just keeping the rhythms really simple, you can kind of narrow down the range of notes. There's pl there's like a million ways to customize these exercises in, in uh, Sight Reading Factory as well, which I really love because it allows you to take control of the reading exercises and set them up uh, for your skill level and for high levels of success. And then what you can do is you can hit the next button, and then there's a new exercise just generated automatically. So this keeps the reading fresh and allows you just to kind of work on extracting the information off of reading it as quickly as possible. So then I'd go through the next exercise and just read through that. And again, this is all done in time. Now as you progress, you can also increase the speed. There's a metronome up in the top right hand corner. Uh, so we can increase the speed here and that builds our skills even more. So here we are at 90 beats. I'm going to start with this one here. Two, three, four, C. D, D, C, B, A, A, G, A, B, C, A, G, A, B, C. And again, I'm, I'm singing the notes. I might as well just to get my voice attached to it. Um, but as you can see, hopefully it's relatively easy to do this, or you want to start very easy. Um, but the idea that I think about this is this is really the idea of learning a language, right? So uh, we learn a language by learning to read and write and hear. And so if, as a, as a pro musician, I can say that learning to read and write, becoming literate in music has, has really helped with learning the language of music and becoming really in tune with it. So that's where reading is really a, a, a extremely useful and valuable skill where I can tell that guitar players that don't really read or can't really read, and I was one of them, 
their skill level is just generally lower here. You know, a lot of them can play really well. I'm not saying that you know guitar players who don't read can't necessarily play, but if you can read, it's just more skills at your disposal uh, to take you to other levels musically. I know that's what happened for me. Okay, so again, this is sightreadingfactory.com. You can do this with any reading exercises. Um, and so the thing is, if you're not sure about like how to get started with uh, reading, um, knowing your scales, or how to structure your time to actually go about all this stuff, um, I do have some systems and methods uh, that I can help you with in this regard. Learning how to read, how to open up your understanding of the fretboard, your theory, how to do this in creative ways to, to um, help with your songwriting, composing, improvisation, and just understand music in more depth. So if you'd like to learn more about that, click the link below in the description and it'll take you to a page where you can learn more about um, how to learn those things, how to become a more fluent guitar player by learning how to read, how to understand the fretboard, enhancing your theory, improvisational skills, and things of that nature. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, my name is Matt Friedland, founder of the 360 Music System. Uh, I hope you got value out of this. Uh, if you did, please uh, subscribe to the channel, like the page, uh, share this with a friend, uh, drop a comment and let me know what you thought, if you found this was helpful. If you hated it, let me know. I'm, I'm happy to kind of hear that. Any feedback is, is good. And again, appreciate you guys watching this and I hope this really helped out and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.